Well, we're here with Jan Ozu, who is the 2008 Washington Post Coach of the Year, and you also played on the Cameroon Davis Cup team, right? Cameroon Davis Cup team, and I was also a representative of the junior French team. I have dual citizenship, so I can go both ways. <laughs> okay. Well, well, Jan, uh, talk a little bit about how you got involved with Thanks USA. How long have you been playing? How did you get started? And so on. Well, first of all, I've been in Washington, D.C. for about 20 years now. And, you know, through my experience here, I've met a lot of locals. And uh, Bob Oaken, who is the, you know, the person in charge of this event, he's a very good friend of mine. So, you know, it was an easy, easy, you know, transition to just get involved with him and help him out. It's a wonderful cause. You know, we want to help out the troops in whichever way we can. And this is the best way that I can do it as a tennis player is get involved in a fundraising event mm -hmm. to help the troops. So it's a fabulous uh, association. And Bob's a heck of a tennis player too. Have you played a little dubs with him? Oh my God. Bob and I actually practice together on a regular basis. And out of all the amateur players around here, he's probably the closest one to being borderline pro. So he's a very solid player. Well, of course, of course, yesterday was the French Open, so let's pivot and talk about that a little bit. Sure. I thought the match was going to go five. I thought Rafa was going to win it in five, but I, expect, I expected a little bit more out of Soderling. So tell us, you know, from your per, uh, perspective, what happened there? Well, I think obviously, you know, um, you have players like Roger and Rafa who have been in that position before, so they're a lot more comfortable with dealing with the pressure. That being said, you know, Rafa is the type of player that really not only takes your game away he takes your soul and uh, that is one way that no other player can do you just can't cope with that you blast forehands to the side you know backhands to the side you move him from side to side and nothing goes your way so he takes your soul away and at the end of the day you just you know tired you can't keep up with that you know so that's my uh, <laughs> you know that's the way that I look at it you know well, th this being a doubles event, you know, I expect a lot of people come into the net. But yesterday, Soderling kind of hung out in no man's land. He kept ripping forehands, had opportunities to come to net, didn't do it. Do you think he wasn't confident about his net game, or do you think he just wanted to get the buy, uh, uh, get the ball by Rafa because he was worried about getting passed? I think it's mostly that he was. You know, it's one th when you go to the net against Rafa and you get passed with these crazy angles you get a little, you know, hesitant. Mm -hmm. So I think that they're afraid to rush the net and get past. So in the process, they know they have to, but then they hesitate and that little split second of hesitation, Nadal just punishes you and then you just get stuck. You almost paralyzed. And that's what happens to Sorling is at the end of the match, you no longer know what to do. You know, he beats you mentally, he beats you physically, he beats you technically and strategically and you just look like you need not to be there basically. and. It's just a hard, hard, hard match to uh, to play. He's a hard player to compete against. Mm -hmm. Very hard. Well, this being a uh, being a doubles pro am, and again, all the proceeds are going to support military families. Mm -hmm. We've got the pro, so you're gonna be playing with an amateur, and of course, our audience wants to know, you know, what are some what are some pieces of advice okay. you see a, a rec player? What would you say are some big mistakes that they're making? What's some advice you can give to the uh, the the internet out there? <laughs> Well, I think the most important part that everybody needs to always remember is it's doubles. And that being said, it's a team sport. It's as good as, you know, you can get playing team sport in tennis. So you need to get your partner involved. And I think the most common mistake that people make is to try to basically be the only player out there winning all the points. They feel that their partner is not good enough, so they're going to try to go for big serves. You don't want to do that. You want to find what is your, your partner's strength and essentially nurture it and make it come out. So if you have a partner that's really good at the net, serve to a direction that can help them out to poach, for instance. Then they feel very, very confident. The last thing you want is that partner to feel like he does not belong and he doesn't need to be there. You're going to take it all by yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, and then they don't, get in, they don't get involved and they start to lose points. They're frightened. You, know, you want to get them involved. Let them play their side. Help them to win points and, uh, you know, and participate. Have fun. You know, don't just win it all by yourself because it's not going to work out. Well, great, Jan. I appreciate it. And thanks again for, uh, for supporting the troops. You are wonderful. Thank you.